Alright, so for today's video guys, I'm going to review some boulders from 2023. Some of the highlights, if you will, go over a couple of them and see if I've got some good tips for some of you that might be newer and starting out, or just for those of you that like to watch bouldering videos. I'm one of those myself, I think it's nice and relaxing to just put on a video of people bouldering in the background, seeing some funky routes, seeing some cool stuff, and uh, yeah, just letting it roll. So I figured I'd do the same right now today, and go over a few of them, and yeah, I mean, 2023 highlights is probably a bit late for that, but I figured it's better late than never So really let's just get started with the first video, eh? This is from the climbing gym in Bergen, the largest climbing gym in Bergen, I believe, and early 2023 So let's see how we move, so This is Black Roots right here Pretty extended position, as you guys can see right here Have to use these volumes quite well as well to, to, to get up the wall but it moves pretty all right. I mean, there's a crimp on the other side of this uh, this black black volume, and there's one on top of this one as well. So I thought it looked like I'm in quite an extended position. The, the holds are actually pretty decent. Using a bit of a bicycle grip on my legs here, so uh, pushing and pulling with uh, with the legs. From this position, I could kind of campus it, but I figure like if I put my legs higher, it will be easier to to generate some force and to get myself up to the next crimp, as you guys are seeing here. A bit of an awkward uh, switcheroo from uh, from a pulling to a sort of pushing position with my with my right arm right there and the knee is not ideal but I mean I get up and uh, yeah yeah I, what, what can I say I get up the top but it's it's not the most elegant maybe that's a good sign in terms of like I've improved my climbing and it looks better and or is is perhaps more strong you know definitely more strong now but uh, looking back at it it's, it's a funky route it's a cool route and um, and my main takeaway from reviewing this video and looking back at it would be that just whatever you see in your gym that looks interesting or it looks fun, just go for it. Give it a try. Even if you have no chance of completing it or no chance of even starting it, just give it a try. It's brilliant to build up that sort of inner curiosity and just learn to just experiment and try out stuff. Because eventually the more things you'll try out, the better you'll be, the more techniques you'll learn and the better of a climber you'll become in the future. And also I know how it is like, I know especially for those of you that are perhaps at a bit more of a beginner stage, it might feel quite a bit awkward and you might feel a bit sort of, feel a bit weird and funky walking up in front of a bunch of people when testing out a climb. And you might think, oh, especially if I can't even do it and it's easy, right? It's, it's sort of super awkward. But this is where a video I really like sort of plays in my head. Video I've seen, like, I, I don't remember where I've seen it, but it's just incredibly good and it, and it fits really well here. Where it's this guy who's in the gym He's really small, he's just started out, and he hasn't really built much muscle, right? But he's in the gym and he's training, and I don't know sort of the circumstances, but people are laughing at him, right? For some reason, people are sort of laughing at him or, or sort of joking around with him. And he is quite angry, and he says, one day I'm going to be the biggest guy in the gym, right? And everyone starts laughing, except for the biggest guy in the gym. And that's just such a fucking good clip. It's just such a good analogy for it as well. The people that are really good climbers, the people that do really well, they are the people that will look at you trying a difficult problem, even if you can't do anything, like you just completely fail it, right? Like, they are the people that will look at that and think, you know what, mad respect, you know, it's actually cool to see that he or she actually tried it and actually gave it an attempt. Because it takes work, like to become a good climber, like it's a difficult sport, you know what I mean? It's an amazing sport, but it's difficult. And so to, to show up and to constantly try and, you know, do things that you haven't done before and to try to improve every single session, it takes discipline, right? It takes hard work, it takes consistency. So the people that are really good, the people that you think might be looking at you and thinking, oh God, like imagine not being able to do that. They're looking at it and thinking, good for him, good for her, good that they're out, getting out of their comfort zone and actually trying, you know what I mean? So yeah, the biggest takeaway from this is just whatever you see that seems interesting and you think you could try it, or maybe even if it doesn't seem doable, but if it's like, it just seems fun, it just seems exciting, just try it out. What's the worst that can happen, eh? All right, so the next clip is, let's see, also from Bergen, also early January, um, and this is the fourth ever black route I did in the gym in Bergen. So the way they grade, uh, the grading scale works there is that you start off with green roots, then you have blue, then you have yellow, then you have red, and then you have blacks. Eventually after that you have purple and teals, but then you're starting to get into some really, really funky shit. So, so yeah, this is the fourth ever black one I did, and the last clip you guys just saw is the third ever black I did in Bergen. So this is a couple of weeks, couple of days, couple of weeks after, and uh, yeah, enough talking, let's just see how it moves on now. Eh? 
pretty funky start as you guys see, a bit of compression in addition to this, uh, this heel hook leading to a bit of an extended position right here and requires some tension to, to hold on but then I get into a section where you sort of have opposing holds like you, you're able to clamp yourself in quite well not the easiest thing in the world and the holds aren't the best but you're able to sort of uh, to sort of scrape by and here getting to the top, is this the one I finish or yeah okay so just about fall off and I don't know if I have a another clip of this or not but I still wanted to add it in regardless because I figured there were some good 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 takeaways from this. One, it's it's a dope route, but there's also something to be said for, for both the start and the end. I mean in the beginning, the nice thing here is that just when I first started out, I actually had no idea how to do this route. Um I tried a bunch of stuff, but the things I actually ended up implementing right here with the heel hook, I didn't have a clue about when I begun. Right now, and that's how it often is, I feel like, is you start a border problem and you sort of, you manage to complete it and at the beginning you have no idea how to do it, especially if it's like sort of at the edge of your your capabilities at that sort of difficulty. But once you get a few moves there and there and it sort of seems like it makes sense that, oh, okay, have a heel hook, have a toe hook, have this type of clamp or like whatever sort of move you're supposed to have in there. Once you've done it, it seems so obvious, but before that point it doesn't really make sense at all, right? And... Because of that, I'd say just like a big thing when you're climbing in general, you just try out stuff. Like the more things you test out, however funky they might be, like just go through a catalog in your head of different techniques, you know, like could I use flagging? Could I use heel hooks? Could I use toe hooks? Like whatever you might think of, could I start my hands reverse? Could I face out out from the wall? Face into the wall as, as it's more standard, right? Like whatever you might think of, try it out because eventually if you test out enough things, you'll stumble upon something that actually works. Also, another big thing that I saw from this video is that if you struggle with, for example, here, right, the lockout, not sure if I actually did this properly, but I think I actually just left it as it is, like I didn't redo this this route. But for example, here, right, it's so close to be holding it actually properly. But the big thing that often is a, is a problem, right? So if you're doing a route, and sure, if it's very dynamic, it might not be the case that there are many good static solutions to it, although, you know, test it out, who knows. But as you guys see for this as well, so many times when you're struggling to finish a border problem or do a transition and stuff, it comes down to how good of a, um, how good of a base of support you have. It comes down to the feet. I remember when I started climbing, I was so just thrilled to be doing some, some sort of pull up related sport that I would just go I would just go in there and almost camp as most of the routes right and of course that works for a few routes and for a few number of grade levels I suppose but once you get up there it's like you, you cannot complete routes by just relying on upper body strength and, and and strength at all right like you need to incorporate your feet it's super important and so worked a bunch with it and what I realized is like most of the routes I was struggling with a struggle because I couldn't get a proper base of support. So if you're struggling with a route currently, you have either a transition point that is a weird sort of sticking point for you, or the top, you should just you cannot lock off the top with both hands. Most likely it's because your base isn't there. So try to play around with it. Like, can you do a heel hook, a toe hook? Can you shift around your hips a bit? Can you do some uh, flagging out? Can you do like a bicycle? So one leg pushing, one leg pulling type of thing. Can you create a scenario where like, with one arm or even with no arms you're holding yourself quite well in the sort of second to to last position or just very near the top because if you can do that you've, you've pretty much got it in the bag so that's something to look out for all right so for the third clip this is also the gym in bergen also early january so uh, so probably a few days after the previous clips and I'm doing a camper style. It's a regular boulder problem, but I decided that I wanted to try it without my legs because it was quite quite all right with with my feet. So I decided to just drop them and see how it works. And the reason as to why this is in the highlights of 2023 is because it contains an important message. And that's just having fun. So much of what we do is always focused around building more strength, building more size, all of these things. And it's great to have objectives and great to have goals. But one thing I think is really important is just movement in general, right? And having a bit of fun, because it's just so strange that as kids, we go around exploring, adventuring, having fun, playing all the time, and then suddenly we become adults, and we just stop doing all of that. And that just doesn't make sense. 
So yeah, sometimes you can do things just because they're fun, not necessarily because, oh, they lead to the best benefits in terms of strength and stuff. Well, in this example, doing doing campusing and uh, as you guys can see, I mean, it's, it's probably quite similar to doing bodyweight pull-ups in many instances, right? But the big takeaway is simply to to incorporate some fun into your training as well because you'll enjoy it more, you'll be more consistent with it, it will be easier to build it as a habit. And also because it's an important important part to, to cultivate into our daily lives, right? To have fun and to, to learn to just play around, experiment and be a bit more adventurous. So yeah, if you can do something that you enjoy and at the same time gain some movement, all the better. All right, for clip number four, this is in the gym in Trondheim. So this is where I'm currently studying right now. Also in Norway, but different gym, different place. And yeah, for this one, a bit of a jumping start, this little precision, you have to catch yourself with a toe hook and sort of clamp yourself into a bit more of a secure position before you can match the start hold and actually begin. And as you guys can see, well, I'm, I'm including a few of the attempts as well leading up to, leading up to I reckon a more successful send. But yeah, it includes not very many holds at all, four holds and the volume that you're starting with. And the reason that's why I'm including this into the highlights, well, it's a bit of a funky problem. It was cool to sort of throw in there. and It's good memories to look back in, back at this time around, is it late March, I reckon? And, um, but, but a big thing about this is that, but a big thing about this is that, um, well, even if you struggle, as you guys saw me do quite a few times there with, with the first move, that doesn't mean that you can't do the rest of the boulder problem, right? Because I'm telling you, I'm seeing too many times like all, all over the gym, I'm seeing people that try a boulder and they fail the first or second move and then just go away from it and do something that's more fun instead. But I'm telling you, I know for a fact they would be able to do, if not all the rest of it, if they started from move number two or three, at least three, four, five moves into the boulder problem. And at that point, it would be just a matter of nailing that start or little transition from second to, from, from well, first to second, third move, and you have the entire boulder. There you go. So it's just a matter of not always being so attached to having to start from the beginning. Like use all the holds you can to get to a position where you feel like you're semi-stable and then see if you can finish it off from there. And this extends really nice as well because one thing to keep in mind is that whatever level you're climbing at right now, you might only be a couple of moves away from doing the next boulder grade. And what do you mean by that? Well, if you do, if for example, if you look at this route, right, you see, you see that the entire rest of the boulder problem, me going up here and like, sure, it's a bit of a funky problem, goddamn, but the entire rest of it somehow worked out, even though it took me a bunch of attempts to do the start. And you probably have the exact same situation. If you're regularly climbing, and not just with re regular boulder problems, but like, let's say you're regularly climbing of v, v, V5s, V6s, then a V6 or V7 for you in the gym, there are probably two, three, four of those in your gym right now that you would be able to do 70, 80, 85, 90% of, but the only thing that is holding you back from actually completing them and moving up a grade, sort of in your climbing, your climbing expertise, climbing level, is that you just cannot do the start or one point in, or like one single move in the mid transition. And with that, you'd realize that, oh shit, if you just did what you could from a boulder problem, rather than focusing too much on the idea that you have to do all of it or none of it, you'd be able to move faster up in grades. And this is also one of the reasons why you should you should try to tie less into the idea that a good boulder session is a session where you've done many routes, compared to a good session is a session where you've solved many small bits and pieces of larger puzzles being boulder problems. So something to keep in mind. All right, now for the fifth, or is it a sixth? No, it's a fifth. For the fifth and final clip for this video, by the way, let me know if you guys want me to make another video about this or a part two, because I've got some more clips from 2023, but I figured I didn't want to make this video insanely long, so I'm stopping it right here. For this clip, this is my second ever black route at this gym, so in Tonheim. Here the grades, I must say, are quite a bit more difficult than in Bergen, probably, probably one of the most difficult gyms I've ever climbed at, to be honest. Not that I've climbed at that many, but it is a... Uh, it's a bit telling, I've been to a few. So so yeah, starting off with this, as you guys saw here in the start, starting off with this weird heel hook. And here you have to have good body tension and really press those heels into uh, well into into the wall to actually be able to, to move on. Another heel hook. God remember back to I remember back to doing this problem and it had so many weird bits and pieces to it. 
looks pretty darn cool and it's, it's nice to have in the memory bank now but what a funky problem god damn moving into this Gaston that took a bunch of attempts and then from here the worst part is pretty much over but you need to have enough in the tank to to finish it off and as you guys are seeing right here I've got a few options for how to finish it off but just it took me quite a few sort of quite a few adjustments to realize that okay I'm in the right position like if I actually try it right now I'm able to I'm able to get to get to the very top but yeah dope border problem did this in um, early June I believe and yeah in, in the gym in Tornheim so great memories great uh, great boulder but in terms of takeaways from this one I've got a few things um, I wanted to share with you guys as well and that is that if you're doing a boulder problem and you realize that there are certain positions you cannot do or certain positions you can do right so bringing that back from earlier like if you realize that okay I can actually do most of the moves or at least some of the moves in this boulder problem then if you want to really go for that boulder and try to unlock the next grade or just even if it's the same grade like you can learn a lot from it right you should you should try to put most of your attention to working on the moves you haven't yet gotten right because I'll like I'll climb with people and they'll do they'll do a boulder problem and it's quite simple they manage to like get through quite a bit of it but then there's like one move they cannot do in the middle they sort of just skip it and move on to the next problem but you learn a bunch if you sat down and really thought about, okay, how can I do this one move? And then once that is done, you can tie it together and do the entire chain, the entire sequence. And there you go, you've just learnt another move. If you keep going like that with boulder after boulder after boulder, even if you just manage to solve one piece of the puzzle at a time, over time you accumulate a bunch of different moves that you've managed to do. And that builds up over time in terms of uh, your body remembering it much better, right? So building, you're building muscle memory. That's absolutely huge in climbing. And the more moves you do, the more boulders you do, the better, right? But here, here is that big idea again of like, it doesn't matter if you complete the entire boulder, but if you can complete sections you haven't earlier been able to do by sitting down and dedicating, not necessarily like, not necessarily like four sessions to it, but dedicating a good couple of attempts, a good couple of sessions to a particular problem, You'll learn so much more over time than if you just jump around from what feels easy to what feels easy and fun again, right? So something to keep in mind for this one as well. So there you have it. That was some of the highlights of 2023 in terms of bouldering. I've got a few more if you guys want a part two. Let me know in the comments down below. But without further ado, thanks for watching. And as always, remember to keep on training, train what you love. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.